Sweet. <gasps> What's up? What's up, Nick? R Ryan and your apple juice. It's so happy. Oh, we're so happy that you're here. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm Amsel from the Fresh Herald, and this is my friend Spose, aka Ryan Peters. What's up, and Amsel? I remember, gosh, I remember years ago you showing up. You hand delivered one of your albums when we were still at One City Center. Can I swear? No. Do we have a policy she on She says no. I was going to say I sure, sure did. <laughs> but uh, with swears in the middle. Um, yeah, no, I did because relationships matter. And I thought you would um, appreciate it. There's only been a handful of people that have actually hand delivered. Amy Allen or, did, Jenny Van West. I think that's it. And you. So just the goats. <laughs> just, me, just me and yeah, Amy Yep, yep. Um, which is it actually an unintentional, and, uh, but I will say, darn right, excellent segue on my part, to talk about the fact that I learn something, we all learn something new every day. Here's what I learned today, which I'm like, and I tried to think, D did I know this? Oh, I no. So this guy to my left actually wrote album reviews for the uh, Portland Press Herald. Could you unpack that, the timeline of that, and what that yeah. was like? <laughs> the timeline of that was when I was 15, I, the Portland Press Herald wrote in, in like the audience section that they were, or maybe somebody like showed it to me at school or something at like Wells Junior High, or they were like, um, I didn't know you guys were here. That's my aunt and my uncle. I was just telling That's you about mom? my aunt. No, my oh, aunt, aunt who went to see Brandy Carlisle and you oh. too. This is my Aunt Paula. Where's the Brandy fan? We're talking we're, later. My okay. Aunt Paula right here. We were Excellent. talking about Brandy Carlisle. I am so big. Shout out, shout out to you guys. Wow. <laughs> My dad was so nervous about this. He's like, what are they going to ask you? Yeah. It's clearly just when I started writing for the Press Herald. But um, <laughs> I started writing those in eighth grade because there was like a ad that was like, we're trying to hire high school, junior high students to write for the Press Herald, which if you go dig up these reviews was a terrible idea because they're awful. <laughs> like we're, we, It's like you're reading an eighth grader, ninth graders like review of the Deftones or whatever, or um, like a Weezer album. And so, but you guys paid me 75 bucks and I'd go to Bull Moose and I'd buy the album and Press Herald would reimburse me and then I'd read them at Grandma Pauline's house on Sunday when I was at my dad's. And, uh, and it was a big honor for me. Like it was a big deal because like I, I obviously grew up listening, you know, um, reading the Press Herald and then um, to be published in it was... I mean, I, I, would, I, still I can't would have swear. given my arm for a byline at that age. So that's pretty cool. Right. And so I felt very, I don't want to use, I'm like overusing the word validated lately, but like I felt um, stoked about it, I guess. Yeah. And I was like excited to show people. And then I was very, I was very into like newspapers at that point because I started working illegally at a newspaper when I was 10 years old doing like ad design and they gave me my <laughs> own like page that I designed and, or I, you know, I wrote also terrible yeah, album yeah. reviews. So I'd had a lot of practice in terrible album reviews, but the um, getting to write for the Press Herald in eighth grade was like a big flex. And you also, since we're unpacking you know, journalism things, uh, you told me when we were chatting downstairs as I was finishing my delicious pad thai, that you were actually thought about quite seriously about pursuing a career in journalism. Yeah, I thought that was always what I wanted to do. I wanted to like, uh, I wanted to like, um, I don't know, write for a magazine or something, yeah. or write, I wanted to write for Rolling Stone or whatever, and um, always wanted to write. I was always writing when I was, I went to college to be an English major after trying to go to college for other stuff. Right. <laughs> and you wound up at Suffolk University in Boston, I, right? Right, I wound up, I wound up at Suffolk, um, and, uh, I, I, was a, I was an English major until I dropped out to be a rapper, which right. is just another type of English major. I mean, you're not wrong. How many, how many people are actual Spose fans like in this room? Yeah, right? So, like, Who's not? I mean, I, <laughs> I, I took some refresher. Um, I, I know a lot of your music. I don't know every single song, but I listened to like, You just listened to it today? No. Listen, I said I don't know every single song, but I, I listened to about seven just random songs from your discography that I hadn't listened to before. Wow. Listened to before, and, and uh, I'm intrigued to know what they were. It's, the wordsmithing involved is huge. It's so huge. And how old were you when you started putting pen to paper with this sort of thing? With songs? Yeah. 
eight <laughs> or something, you know, yeah. as far as like trying to write songs. And it, but it was at that point, it was like, which I don't realize, I didn't realize at the time, but this is almost like, you know when you like start a band in like third grade and you're like, you're the bassist and like, you're the, you're the singer and you're the drummer. We didn't and start you're the, bands in third grade. None yeah. of you, nobody else did. <laughs> this was my primary objective was like being Green Day or whatever. And, um, but I was like, and you're the manager and this is the album cover and I like drew it and I didn't realize that that's like actually like visualizing, you know, like a, the tool of like manifesting and like visualizing is that's kind of what I've always you done, I guess. You order to the universe. And so, yes, I've subscribed to the universe. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I started writing songs in maybe, I wrote like a parody of a song. That was like my first song. You did, did a little Weird Al, a little bit. Exactly. Okay. And then um, I think in seventh grade, we started a band called Fight Shirt me and my buddy Matt Sampson, who's like my, my other music friend, mm -hmm. Sticky One, to the Spose fans. And, um, <laughs> and me and Matt Sampson and Zach B, we started playing songs as a band because we were really into Weezer and the Smashing Pumpkins and, and stuff like that. And so we started playing as a band and we would write those songs. And then I got kicked out of the band because I was too bossy. And... Um, <laughs> And, Wait, uh, so were you rapping or singing or both? We were Most singing. Days. We were yeah. singing. We were not rapping. But I was into, it's almost difficult to grow up in the late right. 90s and not know a bunch of rap sure. songs. So obviously sure. I was like into that stuff too. Um, and uh, so when I got kicked out of that band is when I started rapping. Because yep. when you're left just by yourself, that's what you do. That's what you do. <laughs> and so I, um, we started like a rap group, me and a couple other kids, and we just were imitating, as you do, until you figure out what you are, mm -hmm. you just imitate everyone else. And so all throughout high school, we would, shout out to my mom, my mom's parenting, is my mom here? Questionable parenting, but she would allow me to pretty much say whatever the hell I wanted in, our, in my bedroom and never came up and like told us to stop, which, probably should have given some sure. of the stuff, but it was, but we were just imitating like Eminem and D12 and like 50 Cent or whatever was happening in 2000, 2002. And so um, I kept imitating rappers till I kind of found my voice. Yeah. Um, can you, we have a lot of stuff to talk about um, that we're gonna get to about what's happening with you now, but I think it would be really fun for the people in this room. And I've never heard it told by you. So maybe you could tell the story of, this, of the song I'm Awesome and the video, because I actually rewatched that, I mean, I've seen it a bunch of times, but I rewatched that today. And I still think it's a banger of a song. I still think, I don't know what your relationship is with it. It's I bittersweet, yeah. I actually don't yeah. care. No, I'm kidding. No. But, um, <laughs> but I want to know, because I mean, it has like, you know, millions of streams and millions of views on, on YouTube. And like, that was a huge song. And, and not just here. I mean, that got some national, um, spotlight on it can you t kind of just tell us and then we'll, we'll, we're gonna jump to present day spose as well don't worry no that's fine i mean okay. it's really important it's history it's really yeah. important moment because i was up till that point working at barnacle billy's yeah. <laughs> you know like uh and when that song came out which i made which i wrote while i was and that was self-produced self-released yep 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 and um that song was the 11th, 12th song I ever put out. Mm -hmm. So the context of it is I was not prepared to have a big yeah. hit song. And so I, and shout out to Mark Curto at WCYY, yeah. who's the only reason that song became a hit song, I, in my opinion, because he like, cause like radio stations don't have balls whatsoever. And they play, you know, for the most part, don't play local Except music. Except WMPG. Except WMPG, which yeah, which always has, and college radio and and whatever, but they never really take risks or or like I even do like mornings on um, Hot Radio Main for for fun on Fridays, and I'm always like, hey, this whoa, playlist. Whoa, whoa, you're a guest guest host, or what do you do? Yeah, I'm the third. How long have you been doing that for? Like three, years. four months. No, oh. like since the summer. It's fun. It's just fun. I like Ryan and Tara, and I, and I like doing the morning show with them. But I always say that the playlist sucks. 
and they play the same songs over and over and over again. And I'm like, it, could we? And I literally, like, I'm at the computer. I'm like, what if we took out this Chris Brown song and we put in this song? And he's like, well, we, when, this is Ryan Dillon. This is my, sorry, Dillon. This is my impression of you. He's like, uh, well, when people hear stuff they don't know, they change the, they change the station. So radio stations have no balls. But everything has got its first, including your song, right. its first and so, play. I mean, when Curdo dropped the needle on I'm Awesome, nobody heard it. And nobody had heard it before. Right. And it instantly, well, it's what they call, this is like the dirty like industry term of that song, is it's a reaction record. Like you hear it and you react, you have some like feeling. There are scientists in a laughing. room in Cleveland that analyze all this stuff. Yeah. Right. We don't and, even know what we like. We're told what we right. like. Right. Yeah, in many that's ways. true. And, yeah. um, and so Mark Hurdle played the song at WCRY, but in my mind, the song was just another of the, like, it wasn't to be the defining characteristic of Spose. It was, right. to, it was to be like, um, here's something else I can do. You know, because the first album was not to say serious, but it was like, here's a dark depiction of like 21 year old kids in the suburbs told in the language of like the rap music we grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. And so I thought everybody would understand that like, okay, this is um, satire. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm awesome, but. But it's smart satire. Thanks. That's a, that's a smart song, you know? Thank you. And so my, my objective with I'm Awesome when I wrote it was to like make fun of how every rap song is about how great everybody is. Mm -hmm. But it quickly, when it came out and Mark Curto played it and then it became like the most requested song on WCYY, which was, surreal to me because that's the station I grew up listening to much like I grew up reading the Press Herald mm -hmm. so these are all like it couldn't get any bigger and then it went to when it went to Q97.9 which this is the sad reality is that way more people listen to the Q than WCYY because it's pop music and so as soon as it went there it was like over it was like the most craziest like six so months of my life. So labels reached out or like what happened? Yeah, like labels reached out. And this is like the MySpace era. So they like oh, message yeah. me on MySpace I or I get text it. messages. And so I end up signing. I'm so poor at this point. I just need to like iterate that I'm so broke. We just had a baby. So I have like a one year old. I'm 24, three, somewhere in there. And I'm commuting to Suffolk to try to finish my degree in Boston a couple of days a week. And I'm like delivering pizza. Yeah. So it's like when, when a label offered me like $35,000, I was like, yes, sign. And you should read contracts before you sign them. So I. Well, you were young and you were a new dad. And desperate. And, and you so, needed the cash. I mean. And so that was sweet. And I'd never had like any so money. So you got really a $35,000 advance. Right, right. I got 30, which is not, given record labels, not that extreme of an advance. Like I'm sure if I had just said no. Screw you guys. That's not what I was going to say. Would They would give me... I mean, they almost preyed on you in a way. Yeah, I mean, they, they know. They well, hit song they and, were yeah. so adamant that I signed the deal, like, Monday. Like, immediately. Remind, remind us what label this was? So it was Universal Republic Records. Oh, so Republic right. Records, it's which is gigantic Taylor label. Swift yeah. and The Weeknd. Sure. And they had Amy Winehouse you know, RIP, and like all these other gigantic, gigantic artists. But for like a couple weeks, I was the priority. Sure. I was like in all the emails. And, and then, I like, mean, you're 23 or 24. That must have felt really good. It felt fucking I mean, awesome. Talk about, <laughs> so, <laughs> talk about validation. That you, you got like, you got sort of like a validation pie, cake, and cupcakes like all at once. Yeah, I did. And it was, and it also, I mean, since then I've been able to be a professional musician, so I don't want to look at it with any sort of, negative, whatever, but I certainly was not prepared um, to turn it into something else, yeah. you know? And, and essentially, I, they, the song becomes like, it debuts at like number 34 on the Billboard charts, which is just, you know, at this point, crazy shit's happening to me like every week. Right. So I'm like, ah, oh, I don't even know how to feel about it. Right. I've decided I'm swearing. And um, they can't stop me now. And, uh, There's and no so. There's no in this room. I think all right, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, and so crazy stuff's happening all the time, but the label is this label that primarily deals with like Superstars. Saturday Night Live and the VMAs. Sure. And so I'm like, there's this big festival in Austin, Texas every year, South by Southwest. Sure, yeah, yeah. And so around this time, I'm like, we should go to South by Southwest and show them, like bring the band and show them that it's more than I'm awesome. And I, the label email, I said this in like an email to like the yeah. label and they were like, 
let's just do SNL in the fall was like the, the mindset. And so it was like, I, they didn't understand that I was coming in with no foundation, no foundational like to prove that it's more than I'm awesome. And yeah. so then they're trying, this is also an era of like uncertainty in the music industry because it's essentially the iTunes era, yeah. pre-streaming, post. Was Napster in the picture yet? Pre, after Napster. Yeah, okay. But it's like, we had a meeting about like what my MySpace redesign would be. I miss MySpace. I just want I to put don't a word. I like at MySpace. All. Wow, really? For, as a journal, a music journalist, it was a really good tool back in the day when, before other social media platforms existed. It was it was actually made for me for musicians. So it was a good right, tool. Right, because it would me. play your songs. I agree. No, yeah. I I do wish you had to hear my stuff when you went to like my Instagram or something. Right, right, right. But um, so this was just like a strange era, and so. If you go listen to like rap music from that era, mm -hmm. it's very like in between the times. It's like trying to be pop rap, which never works really. And so they flew me to Los Angeles and I'm trying to acclimate myself to this like world I've never been in. And they're putting us in studio sessions. I walk in and I don't even know what a studio session is. Yeah. You know, like I've never, I don't come in here with like, what I should have gone in with is like, okay, you know what worked? Me making this by myself with my friends and I should have forced that upon them. But I was so new to it and nobody, also nobody in Maine had really done anything like this besides maybe the Rustic Overtones or, or right. Poverty, the rapper who also had success in the early 2000s. And um, so nobody reached out to give me any advice to be like, hey, you, what got you here? That is what you need to be and do and be confident in yourself. And so I was like, what do I be? You know, I would walk in and basically, so we're making these like pop rap records for the radio, we're making whatever the label wants that I think they'll accept on Tuesday as the second single. Right. And it would always be like, we'd send the email, we'd work all night, we'd make these songs. Meanwhile, my song is one of the most successful things that's ever happened in, yeah. in Maine. But all I feel is like, we sent them these songs to be the second single and they're like, nah, it's not it. So it's like, it might be this cool moment to everybody else, but to me it was like, gun to my head, need the second single. I remember the song Which went like- Which is the opposite of what it's supposed to feel like. It should feel art. sweet. Yeah. It did not feel sweet. It was very stressful. Mm -hmm. And so that goes on all year. I make this whole album. They drop me from the label in November when they get a new label president and they like that, cut. That has happened to so many artists. It happened to the Rustic Overtones. Sure, uh, yep. They When they were signed as well, they the label, um, changed hands or the label folded and they got sent to Tommy Boy or something and they don't know when the people who are repping for you at the label are gone you don't know they don't give a shit so it was um, that was my experience with with I'm Awesome however the world only like understands what you show them and so like they pretty much were like okay I'm awesome this is what this guy is and they wanted more of it a and B, it gave me all sorts of opportunities because people are not like deep thinkers and they're like, oh, this song already works. Let's use it in an NBC commercial. Let's use it as a theme song of this TV show. Let's give him an MTV show. I filmed a pilot for MTV that year. So it's like, did you really? which did not get picked up, but it was a surreal experience being at MTV. Mm -hmm. um, and me and this girl spent like a week filming this pilot for MTV. And then like two months later, they just like text me or they left me a voicemail when I was on an airplane that was like, hey, they didn't pick up the show. Can't send you the pilot, bye. How, so, I mean, how devastating, I mean, at this point, you're what, 25 or 26 or something, young, you're still young. Right, so it was like this, and then like, a, then how like hard this. Is that, that fall must be, must be brutal. It's like humbling, I guess. Yeah. And so I think um, the universe gives you difficulties and you become stronger and better from them, and so, and so you want to talk about the I'm Awesome video? Yes, I do. So this, <laughs> so this video sucks. I hate it. Don't watch it. Don't listen and to it. It has so many so views. It's so good. It has so many like views, but it is, it was a the first kind of like example I had of like, um, oh, you need to be in charge of Spose, not the 15 people at the label on this like email chain. Because I remember it was like an email and there's like the label head, the guy, Monty Lippman, who like owns this record label and his big claim to fame was like he signed Hootie and the Blowfish. And then he That's like- That's all you need to know. And it went like <laughs> 10 million or whatever. Yeah. And then, But has signed Taylor Swift and all these other people. Yeah. So 
Um, Monty Lippman's on the email, all these like big shot people, the director's on the email. They pick the director based on like who they already know. And the video becomes, before I even get to respond as the guy who made the song and is like the vision of the brand, they already have like the video. They're like, this is the video, it's gonna be. Where was it shot? It was shot in Wells and Sanford, which yep. is a whole ordeal. And then it was shot in LA because we shot it in Wells and Sanford. And they're like, nah, this ain't the video. It's, you know, and so they're like, let's fly to LA. So we flew to LA and all those scenes that are like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air yeah, yeah. type of thing was in Los Angeles. And um, well, let me ask you this, is there a video? I mean, you, you don't have a million videos, but you have some. Is yeah. there one that you're like, this one I love? Yeah, so year, throughout the years, I've got closer to it. Even G. Willikers, which I sure. look at as the turning point of like taking control of the yeah, Spose yeah. brand, which is 2012. That's like way closer. It's mm -hmm. like sub dark suburbia. It's yeah. always what I've envisioned the Spose brand of, if it hasn't come across, is dark suburbia. <laughs> you know, it's like this, the, the fucked up stuff that happens in suburban homes that you drive by with the Christmas lights and the lawns, you know? Yeah. And so, and the people within them. And so uh, I feel like G. Willikers was like the first one I did that I was like, this is what I was trying to say. And then um, maybe, I do hate everything I've ever made. So like um, <laughs> up until like a certain <laughs> year, but like um, I feel like we all got lost. The video is pretty close oh, yeah. to what I want to do. Um, what'd you say? That's your favorite. That's the one then. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, Blow My Candle Out video is pretty cool too. Shout out my man Jay Brown, who I was just talking to today. Um, the Blow My Candle Out video is closer to, which is, um, if you've never, I look great in this video, by the way. <laughs> I, saw, <laughs> I saw it the other day and I was like, damn, bro. Um, but it was like, um, essentially it takes place in Purgatory, which is Harpswell. And, um, <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> which is hopefully where we all go when we die, because it's so nice. And, um, <laughs> You know, and me and Jay Brown made that video pretty much ourselves, and like um, that one was super close to the vision. And then I'm trying to think what other videos I've made. Um, I'm like drawing well, a blank, but those just, ones are we're close. We're all gonna just go on a, a, a bender. Please go Plus, YouTube there's like all a bunch the of videos. Live, I was watching some live footage earlier today from your P. Dank. Should we talk about your Christmas show? Should we just jump into that? Yeah. All right, it's on my list, and I think it's a good one. We're gonna give you a little chance to do a little plug a -roni. Okay. Uh, the ninth annual P. Dank Christmas show is at Aura. Remind us of the date. <sighs> December something? December 16th. Oh, yeah. 17th? 16th. 16th. Of course. <laughs> December. It's Saturday. It's the Saturday. <laughs> it's whatever Saturday people can come around Christmas. Aura but, may um, not come for all the evening. Or they may do. not come. I don't know. Uh, what is that you what you know, said? Or I know every website from my oh, job. Oh, so or a I thought you go, or they may not come. I was like, yeah, that's come. that's uh, a possibility they, no, too. If, if you book it, they will come. Yeah. Those are, or uh, you don't go. From what I um, gather, those are a you and all your your friends. You get like people like Dave Gutter and like half the cool people in this town get on stage and you have a, a hell of a good time. We do. Yeah. This show is like so fun, but it's so much work. But it's it ends up being Jody. You, have you ever had a bad time at Peter and Christmas? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you and you've read, been to all of them, all nine, have? all eight. That's all right, when man. you get to ten, is, can we just can with all these witnesses? Can he get like a special T-shirt or something? Yeah, I've I've regretted that I didn't have some sort of like pin collection or something. Oh, it's almost yeah. like a it's like a pilgrimage at this point. Like people come from sure. all over oh, to come sure. to this because it's. Honestly, it's the closest thing to like the like arena spo show I get to do. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like I, I can see what the, what my Taylor Swift Airs tour would look like, and it's <laughs> sick. But I don't have the budget, so I have to do it at Aura for Christmas. I and, don't have um, to skip a mortgage payment to buy a ticket. That's right. Thing. Yeah. Well, we can go see it at the movie theater now. But the um, yes, that's so true. The um, the Aura show that I've done that we used to be at Port City Music Hall, R.I.P. And, um, seriously, R.I.P. Yeah, seriously. Although I did just go to Arcadia National Bar the other day for the first oh. time, which used to be Port oh, City Music yeah. Hall. Super fun. Also sick. Super fun. Um, but the the show at Aura is kind of like my like big production. You yeah. know, I put some effort into like the. Yeah. I I also like usually pull in like a couple other acts and I have them play. But I do like um, 
I o like I open the show. I try I try to treat it like a play. Yeah. Almost like a theater production where like I come on at nine sharp. We got I rent the floor to ceiling like LED screen in addition to the one they have at Aura, like some platforms and like go off. And so it's the closest thing I can do to like showing the vision I have for what I could do for, you know, the Spose brand, you know, and so it's always sick and you should all come. <laughs> December 16th at Aura. December 16th at Aura. Or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> um, I'm just looking at the clock. We, should, we have still plenty of time. We are going to allow um, a little chunk of time for questions from oh, anyone out here. And I actually have some questions that were emailed in. But Damn. I want a talk to talk about, um, this is a fun thing to talk about, because I don't think most people in this room know about this. So following in the footsteps of people like Joan Baez, and Joni Mitchell, Tony Bennett, and I'm sure a gazillion others. Let's go. You are not just a musician like those greats. You are also an artist. And not only oh. are you an artist, but I have seen, I'm sorry we don't have something to show you, but like yeah, I was irritated by how impressed I was with your painting. Thanks. Your paintings. I saw several of them. I'm like, really? Because like, they're so good. It was, it was really? because I'm like, you're good at, at the music and you're also good at this. Uh, but all kidding aside, <laughs> you have a, a temporary art exhibit from December 1st to the 17th at the Over Here Gallery at Thompson's Point. Yeah, that's When like, did you start? You have to massively unpack this. That's whole. like exclusive news for the people here because I haven't announced that yet. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, thanks. I mean, we got it. Can you, like, you have to really unpack it. Un unpack that one for like, when did you start painting can you tell people a little bit about your art like please sure so I started painting January 1st 2022 oh right Wait. no I think you started during the pandemic it was 23 this year oh so yeah. that recently yeah so I, I haven't been painting for two years yet oh, but I'm wow. coming up so on that, it yeah. and I all the more reason why it's so annoying that they're so good yeah I'm sorry <laughs> it's okay. and so I did go to like three months of art school. Oh yeah? And I just sketched naked people in class, but it was, I was not very good, but what I did in January 2022 was I decided I was gonna paint and just try it and I did it all, I did it nine to five, nine to four, <laughs> January and February 2022. Mm -hmm. And by like March, I was like, it's kind of fucking good. And so, <laughs> and so I like posted it and people were like. I think I was one of them. I was like, what? And so it's honestly been kind of sweet because it's pure. And my music stuff is, even if I like make a song, even if I make something that I'm like, this feels sweet, this is fun, this feels good in the moment. And I listen mm -hmm. to it in the car. I'm like, this is sick. It makes me happy. Then I have to consider how it does commercially and there's almost like a it's like tainted in a way mm -hmm. my like creative music stuff not that i still don't try to do pure genuine artistic expression or whatever but my painting stuff is at this point super pure and so it's like i literally get stoked to like take the palette knife and i do like a little bit of two colors and i mix them up halfway and then i'm like and i'm like stoked just to do that. And so it's like, it's this really pure feeling. And so I started painting and someone was like, um, was like to me, they're like, I really like your style. And I was like, I don't fucking know what my style is. <laughs> I'm just like painting. And so, however, through the last two years, I've kind of figured out that it's like maybe juxtaposition or like putting a UFO on Wells Beach or whatever, but like, um, I really enjoyed doing it. It has been nice to prove to myself that I can do stuff I couldn't do before at my old man age. And so it's like, um, I'm proud of it. I'm happy about it. And I'm stoked to do this like art gallery over at Over is Here Gallery. Is this over your Brick South? Or where, where is this? this so here? it's Ryan and Rachel Adams own this. Um, Ryan Adams, who like you can't go like 30 feet oh, in Portland artist. without yeah, finding yeah. a Ryan Adams mural sure, now. Yeah. And he is an OG homie of mine because he dated this girl, Sophie Tarleton, who went to Wells Junior High. And so Ryan's you heard like, it here first. yeah, and so <laughs> Ryan, you heard it here first. No. So Ryan's like, I've known him for years and he was a very accomplished graffiti artist. And as a member of the hip hop community, I won't right. like rat him out, but like he was nasty. He's not the Enya guy. 
No, I'm he's kidding. nasty Someday too. Someday I'm gonna find um, out who You that find is. that guy. <laughs> Someday. Um, and so Ryan Adams and Rachel, um, I was trying to find a gallery mm -hmm. and Ryan reached out to me. I like posted on yeah, my yeah. Instagram. I was like, I'm trying to find a space to do a gallery because I want to I wanna do it. And Ryan was like, we were just talking about this yesterday. So it's kind of serendipitous because he's nice. my friend. Yeah. And so it's, it's sweet to do it at their space. Um, and actually this dude, Will Sears, is doing one there tomorrow, Friday. Oh, no kidding. Um, who's a great artist as well. And, um, or he's a better artist than me. But um, so in December, so I'm going to do So are you going to do like a, a reception? Yeah, but I'm like doing that? three weekends to coincide with Pete Ant Christmas, which is oh. the 16th. So I wanted to make sure when all these people come to town for Pete Ant Christmas, they can go look at my paintings, take pictures of them, post them on Instagram, make people jealous. Raise the price up. I see what you're doing. So, um, and I like it. And yeah, and I'm selling them all on eBay because I don't know what the value is. Like I can't assert oh. that like this is worth eleven hundred dollars. So have you sold a few pieces? I have, but I just sold the first nine paintings I did, which was my album covers. Oh yeah. That's how I like taught myself to yeah, paint, yeah. and I sold those, and they made. I sold them on eBay. Good for you. And they made some money, and that was cool. Wow. And so I don't know what the value of is, and I almost think it's so pretentious to be like, it's worth this. Yeah, so, I mean, that's all a mystery to me. How yeah, because art is yeah. subjective or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so December 1st to the 17th, we're gonna do like an opening night reception, then the next weekend we're gonna do a little thing, and then like the third weekend we're gonna do a little thing. And um, so come through, if you're around. Yeah. In I mean, the snow. I don't see why not. It's called anyone. And, you know, and if you send a press release to the Portland Press Herald, who knows what could happen? Do people still do press releases? Well, they should, and yes. they should be doing them right, and that's a whole other. Where's Lisa? Do people still um, do that? Yes, they do. Okay. Um, can you type it for me? <laughs> okay. Thanks. So it's called. I called it um, "Anyone Can Paint" is the name of my. Um, oh, is it? That's great. Is the name of my gallery because apparently anyone can paint. Apparently. I do need to give a shout out to my Aunt Paula, who's the artist who I, I knew was a painter growing up, and I saw her painting, so maybe there was something in my mind that was like, Aunt Paula can paint, you can paint. Yeah. She's well, Auntie Paula. I mean, to me. follow your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Make some noise for Auntie Paula. Nice. <laughs> um, so you have released 10 albums, mm. and you just released um, a great single called 15 Years uh, just a couple of months ago. What, what else is cooking with you on the music front? Damn. Like um, the, do you have any? Your I'm always around? making stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'm finishing up an album, I guess. Yeah. Is the short answer. So perhaps in 2024. Definitely, definitely. I've made like a million things, but um, I for me like going back to like in fourth grade drawing the album cover yeah. until like a couple months ago I did a photo shoot with my friend Bell Fall. And we did, a, we did this photo shoot that I was just trying, I just had this like, not to big up myself, it was a really dope idea for a photo shoot. And we did it and I was like, that's the album cover. And then that allowed me to see like, okay, that's the album cover. Those are the colors of the era, mm -hmm. you know? And so it allowed me to kind of visualize what the album would be. And so that has propelled me into like album finishing mode. And me and my friend Ben. And wait, so the cover has propelled, has, is informing the songwriting? Well, it informed like, this is like, okay, I see this album cover like mm -hmm. at Bull Moose in I my see. mind. Okay. Like, uh, and so I know what that album entails. And so it's like, yeah, there's certain songs that I have made. It more so excludes stuff. It's yeah. like, okay, that wouldn't fit on this. Okay. You know, and so um, I've been, I kind of brought in my friend Ben's Been Dead, Ben, oh, yeah. who's a great singer, yeah. producer as like um, executive producer and I played him like 40 things I've made over the past two years and I was like, what do we do with all this? And he's like, well, you literally recorded this crazy life experience of yours in real time, like a movie, and so that's the album. And so I'm finishing that up, I'm gonna put that out. Well, and, we look forward to that. Um, and I had fun making it so it doesn't matter how it does. I, I feel like we have to talk about the fact, that, I mean, you have four kids, you're still a young guy, you have four kids, you have a set of twins. True. And, and, uh, so you have four kids, uh, 14 is the oldest? Or yes, she's a uh, woman. And she's a woman. And what, uh, what, are, do, uh, what is their understanding of, of your music? Uh, you know, what, what was it like when they're, you know, some of your song has, some, some of your tracks have profanity, like what, what is your kids' relationship with, with your music and their dad as a musician? It's fucking crazy. 
No. <laughs> um, no. Uh, well, it's been really interesting because I, I kind of sheltered them from a lot of it and would play yeah. them like the radio edits of stuff. Yeah. But once we got Alexa oh. and they could just choose whatever they want, they would just play Knocking on Wood with the swears. And so Cal has his favorite songs. He's my, he's my son who's a twin and he's eight. Mm -hmm. and he's, but he's probably had Knocking on Wood as his favorite song since he was like four. Yeah, sure. So that's a lot of swears for a four-year-old. But, <laughs> but I've, I've always kind of sheltered them from it in a way of yeah. like um, not playing them all of it or they gravitate towards certain songs, like songs that maybe aren't the songs the public gravitates towards, but they like really gravitate to Rabbit Hole, the song, mm -hmm. or like, I guess maybe it was just like a time and place, but like my album, We All Got Lost, is really like their like main thing, and then they like the song Hypocrite, and like, Oh, but, that's one of the ones I listened to today, oh, I love nice. that song. Oh, thank you. And so, Them and You like that one, and, um, <laughs> and it's actually been interesting, but my oldest, daughter is now in high school and like um it was always like a she told me the other day or today she told me today she's like you're so much more famous now and I was like I'm not at <laughs> all you just weren't like of age when I was and she was like no it's like people like tell me like show me your songs and, like I would say I think you're just 14 now yeah. and like you know, maybe it's coming into your your world or it's like a flex or something, or I don't know. <laughs> but she listens to really offensive, disgusting rap music all the time. So it's not at all, I'm not at all like yeah, sure. shy about my stuff. It's not, my stuff isn't as like uh, sexually explicit as like yes. 21 Savage that she loves. And so um, I think in that respect, I'm like super fine with anything. Well, your songs don't glorify violence against women, so. No, I don't beat up women. Otherwise, we, I probably wouldn't be sitting here next to you. So I, yeah, I thanks. Mean, that's, that's, I you do I'm traditionally doing. write about female artists, so I'm honored that I'm even here. Well, period. I mean, you know, I do like a singer songwriter, um, uh, especially in playing in this room. Um, let's see, it's 7:42. I think we're good. Let me ask you um, a quick one, and then we're going to get into. Um, some other people's questions, dream collaboration, or you can you can name more than one. Kanye West. <laughs> I mean, that's great. <laughs> I don't want to get murdered, but um, anybody else? He's my he's well him. I mean, you know what I feel like isn't that crazy is one of like my favorite artists ever that I grew up listening to that. I'm um, maybe one Amy Allen text away from is like Rivers from Weezer, if he would like oh. sing a hook from me. Because Amy Allen's stupid connected, for oh. the record. Uh, I, I, went out to, I went out to drinks with Amy Allen a couple weeks ago, and she got a text from Justin Timberlake. <laughs> While she was in the bathroom, it was like, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Ding! And I was like, so, th so she's maybe my connection to these artists I would mention. Sure. But like, I guess my favorite artist would be like Kanye West, um, The Smashing Pumpkins, yeah, Weezer, sure. Jay-Z. Um, those are my unattainable dream collaborations, I guess. Um, well, we, I, but you're not, you, I, don't, I don't really feel as if unobtainable is in your vocabulary though, Ryan. True, we I can mean, manifest it. You've been manifesting a lot of stuff tonight. Um, all right, so let's, Let's 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 look at my little listy list. Um, oh, here's one. I mean, right off the bat, somebody's get, this is a fan getting right into it. Um, and I, I, you might not all know this song. That's okay. But this person wants to know the inspiration and thoughts that led to the song Mountaintop. Damn. Okay, so this song Mountaintop is um, inspiration. So. It's kind of the concept of kind of like what I was saying. Remember I was describing my year of I'm Awesome where I'm on the billboard charts and I'm flying all around America and I'm like playing. Yeah. I was playing like baseball stadiums in this tour, which I had been playing like the Big Easy in like, the, in like Empire. So this is like crazy, but I was miserable, mm -hmm. right? And I was like the guns to your head to like try to, so you're at the top of the mountain and I'm sad. So it's like to say like, um, you can reach the mountaintop, which that album's like an allegory for, and I wrote this children's book with it called Pinecone Pete, which yes. is, oh, yes, Pinecone Pete is not impressed. Book. You wrote a kid's book. Out of print, sold the fuck out. Are you, gonna um, Are you gonna repress it for the holidays or anything? No, I don't, I just like move on. And then, um, <laughs> although it would crush, I would write another children's book someday. Yeah. Um, it's harder than I thought yeah. to write a children's book, but um, 
the mountaintop is like the allegorical like moment on the album, which mm -hmm. is a, essentially a concept album about like success or your, tw it's about your 20s. It's like you dream of like, oh, if I get here, I'll be happy. But happiness is not like attainable on the other side of something. Fair enough. You know, and so that's kind of um, the inspiration for that song. I will say, fun fact about that song is um, when I was on tour with Goddamn Chan, this great like rap producer who I've did uh, the whole album Good Luck With Your Life with, Goddamn Chan produced that beat in the car while we were driving in the van. And it's so unorthodox compared to his normal stuff, which is like rap bangers. I keep looking at Nick because I feel like Nick knows what I'm talking about. But um, like, it's like rap bangers, but this is like a piano ballad. And I was like, can I please have that? And he sent it to me. And I wrote the, the verses and the hook. I wrote all the hooks. I, there's maybe two or three hooks ever that weren't me writing mm -hmm. it and singing it in my shitty singing voice and then having a better singer sing it. And so I wrote that and I sent it to Dave Gutter yep. and Anna Lombard because they were in the group Armies yeah. at the time. And they're both friends of mine and they fucking crushed it. And so they sang this hook and took this song to this like gospel almost level. And then we're in the studio recording We All Got Lost, the song. Yeah. And we were doing drums on that, and it was my friend Derek Guerin, who's such an incredible drummer. And go listen to the drums on We All Got Lost, and just know that's Derek being the GOAT. Mm -hmm. And then Tony McNabo, who's the drummer in Rustic Overtones, yep. who's like, the tattoo on my hand is the Rustic Overtones, because that's the only reason I knew you could like succeed at music in Maine. Tony McNabo was there, and, uh, and Tony was like, could I play drums on Mountaintop? And I was like... <laughs> please, please. And so he did, and it. And so it's really special to me that that they, that Dave Gutter sure. and Tony McNabo would play on it, because Dave Gutter and Tony McNabo also, you know, t went to the mountaintop and were sad. Yeah. You know, and so it's like absolutely maybe um, appropriate, I guess, that they would play on it. Um, somebody would like to know, Ryan, your favorite color. It's like lime green. Ish. Didn't see that coming. All right. What did you think was my favorite color? I don't really color? know. I thought you were gonna say like a black, like a gray, or yeah, something like that. You think I'm that. depressing? Uh, I do am. you have any favorite newer rappers? Or, or if you're like you don't, you might just tell us like what you're into right now for music. That's a great question because I am old, and so like my favorite rappers are like Jay Z and Eminem and Biggie and whatever. But I guess of newer rappers, I really like. I guess newer, I'm going by the past 10 years, like I really like obviously Kendrick Lamar, I love Freddie Gibbs, mm -hmm. I love, I love like Griselda, like Conway the Machine and like um, Benny the Butcher and like really stuff I don't relate to at all about murdering people and selling drugs, but it's just so clever. <laughs> um, and so I really like that. I'm trying to think, who else do I like? You ever heard of that British guy, Ren, R-E-N? I gotta send you no. some rent. I don't really listen to a whole lot of rap, but he's Is it like good? Some, who said, blowing oh. my mind. Um, Does anybody know Ren? I do. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's um. pretty good. I like. Um, I really liked this British rapper Slow Tie, who I went to see, but he's been accused of like sexual assault. Uh. So I don't. I didn't say that, and I don't know how that trial pans out. So who knows? Maybe. All right. Maybe I can still like him. Um, what is your favorite place to visit within New England, but outside of Maine? Whoa. That's a wild question. I mean, you can also open it up to the whole country. Or, well, it's or not or Connecticut. Planet. Right, um, we covered that. <laughs> we'll go process of elimination. It's not Connecticut. Um, like, despite Boston, it's probably not in Massachusetts. New Hampshire's like an identity crisis. It can't be New Hampshire. I mean, Vermont. What's wrong yeah, with Vermont? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards Vermont or like Newport, Rhode Island. Oh, Newport. Uh, or what about the, let's expand it to the country. Like, I mean, you've toured. San Diego. You've done a massive amount of touring over the last decade plus. Yeah. Like, what are some of your favorite cities? San Diego, like, immediately stands out as the number one most perfect city. How come? It's just, per it's like um, sunny California, but like not the craziness of LA and San Francisco mm -hmm. and a big city, but like so many beaches. And for some reason we always end up with a day off there. Perfect. Maybe that's why. I've had a, I've chilled out in um, San Diego. I think um, cities I really like for me are a little bit to do with where I've had the biggest shows. 
So like I really like Denver, I really like Chicago, stuff like that. Yeah. But like um, San Diego like stands out as my number one. Uh, did you sing with your parents as a child? Somebody would like to know. Whoa, maybe in the car, like my mom sang Madonna or something, but like, no. My dad played guitar, not like amazingly, but he played enough guitar that when I would go over there on the weekends, I played his guitar and I would watch him play, which he was playing like Green Day, Stone Temple Pilot songs, and I was like, oh, sweet, you can play yeah, yeah, the songs yeah. on the radio, I guess, maybe is like a, maybe the answer to that question. That works. Um, I take, hang on, one thing. Oh, yeah, my mom ahead. sang these like, my mom did sing right. all the time, but it was like, and she's not even, there's no way my mom is actually like religious, but we did, were, we did live in the house, <laughs> look at my aunt and uncle, on the other side of the family. Um, we, uh, we did live at the house behind the church, and we would go, my mom and dad would like clean the church when I was really little, and my mom would sing this one song that I remember, it was like about all God's creatures have a place in the choir, and it's like all about these, these animals like sing, you know, or was whatever. Was that a happy memory? For yeah, you? it was like a happy memory, and she would sing this, and so like my mom always sang, it wasn't like great, but like she would sing, and I do remember like listening to the Lion King soundtrack and like performing with my mom. It's I, like my whatever, you know. Hakuna Batata and et cetera. Uh, just can't wait to be king. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> fucking banger. Yeah, it kinda is. <laughs> um, did you ever get into Hamilton? No. That rapping's so bad. I it's I mean I get it. I get I kinda, that it's if if you've been watching it, it, I get if you you've know. been watching other Broadway plays, you're like, whoa. Yeah, but I was just curious. I wasn't. Even I like American that. history. I'm not, I don't like what happened, but like right. I like knowing about it. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to get all of a sudden just hit you with something so heavy, deep, and real. But you know, there was somebody who actually wrote in the question of, you can answer this however you'd like. Um, where is your life going? Damn. <laughs> or you can pass. You going know. up. No. <laughs> um, uh, that's a good question. Um, to put it super deep, um, I've realized in the last like couple whatevers that I have always sought all this external validation for inner peace or whatever, mm -hmm. and so like I only was as good to myself as everyone else thought I was, and so I'm trying to love myself, and so that's that's I guess where my life is going. I mean, right? <laughs> and I'm gonna. Artistically, I'm gonna keep doing dope shit, and someday we, I would I like mean, to- We really would not expect anything else. <laughs> Good, and um, I mean, I'd like to keep doing art. Um, I'd like to always do music. Um, someday I'd like to make a movie. I mean, you've done, plus you did, you did actually had a, a, a phone, a King of Maine app. Uh, there was a, a, a video a game thing. You had the kids book, you're, you're painting and doing music. I think we need a line of like either swimwear or baked goods. Or like anything on that. I'd, cru um, I'd crush both. I made a raspberry pie last year. One see, day I was like, I wonder if I can about. make a pie. That's what I'm talking about. So, now, yeah. does anybody out there, uh, would anyone like to ask? I mean, we're all friends here. Oh, would, man. would anyone like to ask Ryan anything? Front row. Sir. So first of all, I'd love the tattoo on your hands, iron boots. Shout out Rustic oh, Overtones. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, you married an Armenian, I'm half Armenian, which also appreciate Shout out Armenians. Right. The ones who survived. <laughs> Too soon, but it's all good. Okay, is it like 100 years ago? <laughs> okay. But I'm curious to know uh, what stage, aspirational or otherwise, do you want to play on and why? Oh man, like which really venue? Question. I think, I feel like Red Rocks is like the obvious. Yes. Yeah, I feel like Red Rocks is like the obvious dope Lisa, one everybody would like to play. Lisa, you would be sending me to Colorado if he plays to cover yeah. it. I certainly would. Um, um, if this guy gets on the stage at Red Rocks. Red Rocks, you know a big, a big flex for me. You know what I've never done my own show at, but I've play, I've performed on this stage, but I've never done my own show there is the State Theater. Oh come on. I've never. Well, the Mallet Brothers do it, but I'm like, I don't want to do it unless it's like sold out. Yeah. I'd shout out to the Mallet Brothers, but it's like. How many people think that he could probably sell out the State Theater? You all have to buy tickets then. Um, just a one press release is all it takes. It'll reach all the, all the octogenarians of, of Maine and they will all come to the State Theater. Um, State Theater, Civic Center, like the two, 
you know, I'd like to be able to do that without being like, this is my last show, you know? Because <laughs> uh, that's the truth. You could definitely do it that way. True. But um, don't tell anybody at Aura this. Is anybody from Aura here? Um, but I kind of think PETA and Christmas 10 might have to be at the State Theater. Yeah, perfect. So, um, and then I guess, like, if I'm thinking, like, no, I think Red Rocks and then locally those two is probably my answer. You got, I, Red Rocks is, I've only it's been crazy. there once and it is. It looks insane. Oh, it, it's almost I don't want to open. I want to like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's cheating. Just, so, I mean, Just for the pick. You're listening, you never, he does want to open, he does want to open. Yeah. Um, in our last couple of minutes, does anyone else um, want to, oh, I see it in the back there. Yeah. Whether in painting or music, how do you think that affected your like, maturity and progression for the positive? Super positive. I think it's a super positive to find your style because until you find it, you're imitating. And it's fine. And that's what you should do because you're just, what can you ever do except imitate the shit you grew up taking in at first? I will say for me with my music, the, the moment that I figured out my voice was kind of like a cheat sheet from my friend Cam Groves. Because Cam, I've told this story before, but like I was always just rapping about trying to, I was trying to assimilate to like, okay, I'm not from a city, so I need to pretend I'm from a city. I'm not, you know, it's just the rules of rap or whatever. But when I heard Cam rapping about Irving, like he was at Irving, <laughs> and it, like his room was dirty, I was like, I was like, oh my God, like it's the most compelling thing you can do to write about your own life. Write what you know. You know, and it, write what you know. And that's what they say in writing too, in, in like, as, as like an English major, it's the same thing. It's like, write what you know because the details are genuine and yeah. it translates. Sure. And so finding my voice musically was like, oh, okay, I know what I have to do now is just literally say what's happening in my life, which is the best thing I could possibly do because it's not pretend. And then with my painting, as far as finding my style, I feel like I still am. But like the juxtaposition thing was like, okay, I know I don't want to post just a landscape. You know, because there's, if I go to any gallery in Maine, there's a hundred landscapes of every beautiful like sunset, sunrise, midday in Maine. So it's like, if I'm going to do it, it has to have a UFO. You know, or if I'm going to do Wells Beach, there has to be some sort of character from a movie or, um, I, uh, I was gonna say one that I'm doing that I can't, but it's, um, but just the juxtaposition thing was like, okay, that's what I wanna do. But as far as like the, the painting itself and like these type of brush strokes, this type of palette knife, this type of whatever, I feel like I'm still having fun with it and finding new stuff I like to do um, that feels f fun to, to, to do. And I'm, I feel like I'm learning techniques because obviously I'm just still learning um, and I, I was trying to say this earlier, but I'm calling the gallery anyone, oh, I said, uh, I'm calling it anyone can paint, because I'm still figuring it out. I don't know, you know? Good question. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Anybody? I don't know if I've already told you this before, but I know this is what it is. When you did the full moose tours for I'm Awesome, when you guys... Yeah. Damn. So, like, there were... Is it the old port bull moose? Yeah. Like in the basement? Must have been. R.I.P. Also. Um, no, seriously. Thanks, because I definitely didn't know That's what I was great, doing at that point. point. But memory, I was trying. Yeah. I, I guess at that point, though, 2010, I'd been playing shows since 2006. So, like, I'd been trying. Um, and I think, I, I tell that, like, especially today, like, a lot of kids who are doing music now, I say kids, but they're in their, like, 20s. But, like, they're doing music now and they almost like don't play live until they have a song that's like blown up on Spotify because you, that's I guess the entry point. But I'm like, bro, you need to go play shows now because you need to be in every possible shitty, awful scenario with bad sound, bad venue, bad lights, bad um, sound guy, bad uh, turnout, bad everything to prepare yourself for like the good one. You know, and so, because they're not all gonna be good. So I'm glad I didn't blow that one. And I'm glad you came. Thank you. I remember that day. I was wearing a Justin Bieber t-shirt. <laughs>
when he was when he's not busy texting Amy Allen because she probably gets bro. Texts from yeah, too. no, she's so famous. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. This Thanks, has been Amazon. really great. You were worried we wouldn't be able to fill the time, but you didn't know I just talked forever. Oh, it's so. fabulous. Let's hear it for Spose. Thanks, Amazon. Yeah, um, thank you guys for coming. <laughs>